there's making homemade pasta and then there's making homemade filled pasta like ravioli. That's a whole nother level. You gotta roll out the dough, you fill it, you cook it, only to find all that filling just explodes out of the pasta and into your pasta water. Well, you need a foolproof recipe and Dan's here to provide. I am your foolproof guy. I know you are. So I think making handmade uh, ravioli is one of the most satisfying projects out there. But like you said, if it doesn't work out in the end, it's not very satisfying. You get soup. You get soup. And it all starts with a dough that is really malleable and easy to work okay. with. So that's what we're gonna do here. We've got two cups of all-purpose flour in here. We're starting with two whole eggs. Now I'm adding six egg yolks. Yolks are great because they add a lot of fat and liquid, so they're gonna make it softer and easier to work pliable. with, pliable. But because of all the protein in there, as it sets in the water, you're gonna get something with a beautiful, delicate bite to it. Nice. Now I'm adding two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. All right, so when I'm using my food processor, it is the fastest way to actually make the dough. Okay. It's only gonna take about 45 seconds to bring this together. Okay, great. You'll see that it hasn't formed a dough and it's not rolling around. Right. Though. That's okay. We do a test by picking up some of it here and giving it a little pinch. Egg sizes vary, so if it holds together nice and smooth like that, nice. it's perfect. Okay. So I'm just gonna bring this together here and give it a little bit of counter kneading. And then I'm just gonna roll it out here a little bit. We want roughly a six inch cylinder, a lot of gluten formation. We wanna let that relax as we do with any kind of bread dough. So I'm gonna wrap this in plastic. Okay. We're gonna let it sit for at least an hour or up to four hours at room temperature. And the really nice thing about that is that gluten's gonna relax. It's not gonna be cold coming out of the fridge, so it's gonna be really easy to work with. I think you'll be surprised at how easy I can roll this out. Now, you could fill this pasta with anything and it's gonna be delicious. You know, nice cheese ravioli I love. But today we're gonna make a meat ravioli that's rich mm. in pork and tons of spices. So we're gonna have some ingredients here that mimic a panade. This is two slices of white bread that I just kind of tore into rough pieces. I've also got an ounce of Parmesan cheese mm. for flavor. We're gonna add some liquid, so we have a quarter cup of chicken broth. That plus our egg and the bread, that's the heart of the panade. Right. right? So we have an egg here as well. And then for more seasoning, we're gonna have two tablespoons of parsley, which is minced. I have two garlic cloves minced, a teaspoon of table salt, a teaspoon of ground fennel, three quarters of a teaspoon of lemon zest. I've also got a half teaspoon of pepper, and finally a half teaspoon of dry mustard. Hmm. All right, so now I'm gonna pop this lid on and process this until it is smooth, which takes about 15 seconds. Okay, that is nice and smooth. So now it is time for our pork. So we've got a pound of ground pork here. I'm just gonna pulse this about five pulses until it's combined. You don't wanna overdo this, but you can see when it's done right. Okay. All right, that looks great. So I'm gonna cover this with plastic and we'll pop it in the fridge while we let our dough rest. All right. Okay, so this is a four hour rested dough. We're gonna break this down now into six pieces. Just kind of mark my lines first. So we've got half there, one there, and one there. It's nice to work with pretty equal pieces. That way when you're rolling it out, you can look at dimensions and, and have gotcha. a good idea of where you are. All right. So I'm gonna work with one piece at a time, and it's important to keep the rest wrapped up so it doesn't dry out. I have some bench flour here. We're gonna use it only as we need to to prevent sticking. This wooden board is really nice. If you have a nice wooden cutting board, it won't grab as much. Okay. So I've got a little flour. I'm gonna dust both sides of this with it, and I'm gonna pat this out into a three inch square. Looks good. So now that I have a rough square here, about three by three, I'm gonna use my rolling pin, and now I'm gonna take it out to a six by six inch square. Okay. So we're at six inches there. So now I'm gonna do another flouring, get my board a little bit, and the top. I have to rub that in. So I'm gonna start rolling. I like to start in the middle and roll out, and then start in the middle and roll down. Now, if you've ever tried to roll out just regular pasta dough before, <laughs> yes. you know that you can't talk while you're also doing it because you're bearing down so hard on it. This is easy. Yeah? It's so soft. Yeah, it, it basically wants to roll itself out. Oh. It's a very, very soft dough. So I'm just lifting this up occasionally as it starts to cling a little bit more. I don't need a new flour yet, but if I do, I can absolutely add it. Okay, so now we're at about 12 inches, and I'm gonna keep going until I get to about 20 inches long. Oh, wow. About six inches wide, so it's really what would come out of a pasta machine. Okay, beautiful. That looks awesome. I'm gonna transfer it over to a parchment line baking sheet. You can always do a little fold on that there. We'll cover it with plastic. This will keep it from drying out. We'll do the rest of these, and then it'll be time to fill and cook. Sounds great. Okay, so now the really fun part is forming the raviolis. 
We've got everything set up here and it really helps to have a nice orderly process. We've got our form sheets, we've got our filling here with a nice one tablespoon measure. That's how much we're gonna want in each one. And I've got my nice dough here. So I'm trimming the ends of this pasta sheet so that they're nice and square and we have 18 inches of pasta to work with. Just makes the process a lot easier. All right, the next step is to get some egg white on here. So the egg white is gonna help it stick together gotcha. after we put the filling in. It's actually gonna bind the pasta together gotcha. really nicely. Okay, great. So I'm gonna work with a tablespoon of filling. One of the easy mistakes to make with ravioli is you just wanna fill them up with all that awesome filling. Don't do that. You need enough space to really crimp around the sides. So you wanna be an inch from the bottom and about one and a half inches between them. Okay. So you get five to six depending on the size of your sheet. So the next step here is cut first and then fold oh, over. Nice. So we've got everything spaced out nicely and then I go right between them and cut right through. Okay, great. So I'm gonna fold this over and we want it to touch here so we get a nice border around, not go right up to the filling. Gotcha. And the goal here is to get rid of as much air as possible. So I'm kind of pressing as I go around the sides. Funnel all that air to the front, stretch that pasta. And then once we get to the end there, and then we're sealing it up. Nice size ravioli too. So it's super important to kind of squeeze out that last little bit of air. When that goes into boiling water and that air expands, yes. that's when you get those burst raviolis, which is so upsetting. Okay, perfect. So I'll set that aside, keep going with these. So the next step here is to put a beautiful border on the sides. You can use your knife to do it and it'll look really nice, nice and straight. If you've got a fluted pastry wheel, it's also really nice. That's what we're gonna do here. We're looking for about a quarter inch around the edge. Also helps kind of finish that seal off. So pretty. So pretty. I'm gonna turn it this way and repeat on these sides. And because there's only two of us, we're gonna cook off half of these today. We're also gonna freeze half of them. And that's what's really nice about this recipe. When you make them, you can freeze as many as you want. So what we wanna do is lay them out on a parchment lined baking sheet, freeze them in a single layer, and then you can transfer them to a Ziploc bag and store them for up to a month. All right, look at these gorgeous ravioli. Stunning. Stunning, right? Yeah. So I've got a pot of boiling water over here. I'm gonna add one and a half teaspoons of table salt to this, and then I'm gonna put some raviolis in there. I'm thinking maybe eight each. Sure. All right. So just drop these in nice and gently. Beautiful. All right. So we don't wanna boil these. That's another thing that can kind of cause them to rupture. Sure. So we're gonna simmer them for 13 minutes. So another reason you don't wanna pre-cook that meat is these are gonna be in here for 13 minutes, so it's the perfect cook time to get them just cooked through. All right, great. So while that goes, I also have some sauce over here, which we're gonna serve them with. This is our quick tomato sauce. Mm, perfect, and you can get the tomato sauce recipe on our website. 13 minutes, and be time to eat. Okay, perfect. These look Lovely. awesome. No blowouts. Not a single one. So that's been 13 minutes. I'm gonna shut the heat off. So I'm gonna take my pasta out here. With ravioli, you wanna be really, really delicate. I'm just gonna take them out like this, and then transfer them over. How oh, beautiful. All right, and now we have our Beautiful quick tomato sauce standing ready. Could dust you with a little Parmesan. Please do. And see what they taste like, huh? Nice and tender. That looks gorgeous. They look nice. Mm. That interior is so tender. When you bite into it, it just melts. Garlic, parsley, I'm telling you, the mustard is what seals it. That seals the deal for yeah. you? What I love is the pasta is just cooked through and tender. It seems like a lot of time in the water there, but you have a nice bite, nice resiliency to it. You did it, foolproof ravioli. Thank you. And I said it could be done and you proved me wrong. I, that's the best, I love proving you wrong and making great ravioli at the same time. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> well, if you wanna make these great meat-filled raviolis, it starts with a food processor pasta dough. Make a panade with bread, Parmesan broth, and seasonings, then pulse in ground pork. Roll out pieces of dough, trim, and then top with mounds of the filling. Fold the pasta over, press to seal, and cut with a fluted pastry wheel. Cook them until tender, drain, and top with a beautiful sauce. So from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, a great recipe for meat ravioli. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.